Hey, Leslie. What? I'm a dinosaur. Oh, my God. Just kidding. April Fool's Day. Oh, darn it. You got me again this year, Sam. I know. I'm really getting to the spirit. And actually, the Deadlights is getting into the spirit of April Fool's Day. Why is that? Well, we're doing a live event at the Logan Theater on April 1st. Wow. I know. We're going to have a little pre-screening event followed by a screening of April Fool's Day from 1986. We'll have activities and a mini sode a live mini sode in which... If you come on by, we'll ask you some questions and you'll be featured. If you want to be on the show or you just want to hang out with us and get some April Fool's Day themed drinks, come on by on April 1st. Logan Square Theater. Absolutely. Please come on by, support a local theater and us. It'll be fun. See you there. Bye. Don't you want Don't you want Don't you want Don't you want it? 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 Do you sort of think mine? Mine. Dead like. Dead like. Welcome to the Dead Like Podcast. I'm your host, Sam. Hey, Buster. Bringing you your weekly dose of horror, everybody. Oh, yeah. That was a little funkier mm-hmm. entrance than we usually do. Probably because we got a funky guy with us today. Oh, uh, who's here? It, this is our Tim Ashby. Hey, what's Woo! up, y'all? He's what's back. Up? First appearance in season two. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing peachy keen. How are y'all doing? <laughs> uh, but I'm peachy queen. Peachy, peachy queen. queen. Yeah. Nice. I'm peach prince. Peach <laughs> prince. <laughs> so you doing prince. all right there? Yeah, yeah I'm doing all right. Yeah. I'm comfortable. I don't have to run yeah. a country. I'm just feeling all right. It's yes. a lot of pressure. I like frolicking around in my big ass dress in the fucking fields, mm-hmm. doing nothing because I'm a princess. So yeah. if you've listened to the episodes with Tim before, you will know that we do tend to veer off the the paved path a lot. So that's a warning for everyone who's listening right now. Um, and you've already got a preview of that yeah. in the first five seconds. Um, but let's for a second stay on track and mind you, everyone... What did we just watch? What did we watch? We watched Silence. Silence of the Lambs uh-huh. from 1991, directed by Jonathan Demi and written by Ted Talley. A young FBI cadet must receive the help of an incarcerated and manipulative cannibal killer to help catch another serial killer, a madman who skins his victims. Yikes. Oh, yikes. Based Cl- on the book, too. Based on a book. By Thomas Harris. Thank you, Tim. I think so. Wow. Yeah. Cool. We had all seen this movie before, right? Yes. Yes. A couple Multiple times, maybe. Times? I I think I've only seen it once because the last time I saw it was the first time I saw it. Um, and I remember thinking, how have I not seen this movie yet? Mm. It's been out for at that point it was like 20 years. And oh, damn. it's like so well known for its acting. So Hello? Oh, yeah. should have known. When was this shot again? What year was it? Came out in 91. 91. Yeah. So probably shot in 90. And I think that this movie is super important for the horror genre in general because Mm -hmm. it was one of the, at least in my mind, I can think of one of the few horror movies that was nominated for a lot of Oscars. Like Anthony Hopkins, I'm pretty sure won. Yes. Um, And Jodie Foster. And Jodie Foster. So- for and you don't see horror movies or even thrillers that much nominated mm-hmm. for Oscars. So and awards aren't important, but I think that the significance of that is that there was a general like the general public enjoyed and respects mm-hmm. this movie mm-hmm. and it's an important mainstay in the horror uh genre. It was sure. well, like also this horror introduced I guess like a bigger fascination for true crime Mm -hmm. and just like those kind of shows that deal with like an investigation every episode Mm -hmm. x-files others well and you think about the other movies too that are coming out like i think of seven i think of zodiac i think of where and we're also coming out of the 80s and the 70s which were heavy slasher slash supernatural things mm-hmm. more that are going on. Yeah. The 90s felt more like we're getting into psychological things mm-hmm. and these are humans. They're right, not right. They're not supernatural beings, but they're it's still as scary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Hannibal Lecter kind of pushes that humanity to its max. Like he's super smart. He's very manipulative. He's uh, able to read 
uh, Clarice in an instant. Mm-hmm. So he pushes the boundaries of what a normal hu- human is, but he's not a normal human. And uh, yeah, like That's this movie sure. was so psychologically scary. Yeah. Like it wasn't just like, we're going to show you monsters, but we're going to like pull you back from what they do and show glimpses. But what you're going to get freaked out is how warped their minds are mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and how much they warp your minds. Mm-hmm. I say, let's get into it. Let's get yeah. into Let's get into it. The can. The can. <laughs> how this movie was actually made, the filmmaking. Mm-hmm. And I think that it was a very, it was simple. Mm-hmm. There were the ideas of how they were setting up scenes and shots was simple, but it was very effective mm-hmm. because every scene, I, I want to say every scene, there was a extreme close up of a person's face yeah. or a POV shot, people looking straight into the camera. And it puts us as the audience straight into Jodie Foster's shoes, the main character. We are... Everything about this movie just reinforces that we are on the ride with her completely. Yes. Mm-hmm. I would say there's also a lot of almost theatrical blocking as well, hmm. where um, Jodie Foster in the first scene when she comes back to Quantico, she goes into the elevator and she's surrounded by men and she's mm. like at least two feet shorter than everybody else, <laughs> yeah. it seems like. Or uh, then whenever she goes to that one house with uh, Crawford, and it's just all the male police officers and they're all looking at her and like looking her up and down and she's outnumbered. She's not feeling comfortable in that environment. If there, um, there were these incredible tableaus that made you feel like she was weak. Exactly. Like she, yeah, was, she was tiny, mm-hmm. you know, she was very small, but she was fucking smarter than anybody else. Fierce. And yeah, the, uh, her, the professors knew it too, mm-hmm. you know, she was just good. Mm-hmm. That's why she um, got selected, dude. Mm-hmm. And all those eye shots, like, because this movie is a very, um, it's a very feminist movie. Um, and it's all those eye shots are making you feel uncomfortable, like she would feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But from the top of the movie, she's the only one out there who's training hard. She's by herself mm-hmm. out there in that first montage, mm-hmm. earlier probably than anyone else is getting on there. And she has to work extra hard more than everyone else because she's in a man's world. Right. And so all these cinematic choices that they're making, close-ups of people like intensely looking at her, eyes always looking at her, these tableaus that we have are just reinforcing the situation that she's in, that she's in a man's world mm-hmm. and that she's being underestimated and counted out. Mm-hmm. And it's a great like I said, simple use of the camera to convey these these themes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's great. I mean, she had no other choice because she had nobody in her life. Right. Um. So this was a dream that she wanted to do and she went and accomplished it. Mm-hmm. And also with how she's the only girl in the, well, she's, she's not the only girl, but among the only few that mm-hmm. actually get put through um she that's her superpower you know at the end mm-hmm. trying to get information out of hannibal and she does mm-hmm. because then not only is hannibal attracted to her physically but also mentally and um loves having her there and he is also doing everything in his power to you know get her to come back Mm-hmm. And she, um, she knew that. Yeah, she knew that. Well, and that was an interesting thing, because let's talk about some of those Lecter, uh, Clarice sp- sparring scenes. You mm-hmm. know where they're together, because those are shot specifically too. You oh, know, yeah. he's always oh, yeah. in a box. Mm-hmm. He's almost like a caged animal. How they shoot him, mm-hmm. and he doesn't. This goes back to kind of like the blocking that you're talking about. He doesn't do many fast, crazy movements. He's very calculated. He's very slow. Mm-hmm. And that makes him scarier. Mm-hmm. You know, that makes him feel like and a... he's an all-white. All-white. Yeah, yeah. He's, he, he's sterile. And when you, like, are introduced to him, he's not, like, hiding in a corner, like, staring. And he's not, like... No, he's sitting, looking at you. Like, jacking off, like, on his cot. He's, like, sitting or standing in the middle of the cell, greeting you, welcoming you in. Mm-hmm. Welcome to my restaurant, basically. 
He yeah. feels really dangerous without him having to do much. No. He's yeah. in that cage. He's moving very slowly, very calculated, and it makes me very scared of him. Yeah. And her, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that what's great about her and her power, her superpower, I think that's a great way to put it, is this meekness, quote unquote, mm-hmm. that she has. Because mm-hmm. people automatically on the surface are going to underestimate her. Even Lecter, I think at the beginning, underestimates her because she from the start says, I'm a kid, I mean, I'm a trainee. Mm -hmm. I think that we were all like, oh shit, she shouldn't share personal information. Mm -hmm. But what that does is it kind of like makes Lecter think that he has a step up on her. Oh, she's a trainee. That means I can like really play with her Mm -hmm. with these mind games. So maybe that was a calculated slip that Clarice had to make him think that she's got to step up on them. Mm-hmm. Um, and these all go back to the acting performances too. Yes. That's, mm-hmm. I mean, especially with these scenes between these two is like, man, Whoa. the eye chess <laughs> match between the Lord. Them. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, like, and there's also, so another reason why I think people underestimate Clarice real quick. Let me back up to move forward mm-hmm. is uh, she's also like from a small town in West Virginia. She's a hick quote unquote. So um, she also, that makes her underestimate herself too in a lot of ways. Way. So she is super smart, but she has to learn that she knows enough and that mm-hmm. she can trust her knowledge. Um, but so I bring up the fact that she's from a small town in West Virginia because you also hear Hannibal Lecter every once in a while very subtly add in a, like a little West Virginia accent in there. And Anthony Hopkins is from Wales. He's like British, basically. He, <laughs> that's not his natural accent. So for him to slip into a West Virginia accent accent is not an accident, I don't mm. think. And so it's further just fucking with her mind, trying to like open her up to her actual self that she's been running away from. And Jody does such a great job of like trying so hard to hide what she authentically is in that moment. Like, she's scared, so she's trying to look brave. Um, she's with her senior officer, and she's try- or like FBI guy, and she's trying to hide her West Virginia accent so that she is not perceived as dumb from that. Mm-hmm. Um, like, all these small little things that mm-hmm. she's hiding from people, but she can't hide from Lecter. All he wants her to be is authentic. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's all. I mean, because they're trading. Mm-hmm pieces of personal information about her mm-hmm. for pieces of information that he has about the killer that's running around. Mm-hmm. Yep. So all he well. wants of her is to be completely honest and authentic. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. And she uses that against him. She knows that that's what he wants. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't, I just want to say the script works so well. Yeah. Go, We're go Ted. giving information. Mm-hmm. Go Ted. Just, you know, uh, in bare minimum, that we are also solving the case along with her. Mm-hmm. Um, and for it to be a 1991 movie and the editing of it is not so in your face, I think is so, makes this movie transcend and is still good to mm-hmm. this day. You can read it along and it's it's wonderful. I kept thinking to myself, I was like, I forgot how fucking good this movie is yeah the the editing i'm glad that you brought it up because it's it's subtle editing too Mm -hmm. there was i think a perfect example of it is the scene when she's at the funeral home she starts to drift off in her thoughts and we have her then remembering her father's funeral Mm -hmm. but how it's edited, we don't necessarily even realize that she's remembering her father's mm-hmm. funeral until we see her switch to a little, her little girl self standing over her father's coffin. Mm-hmm. And you don't, so it's a nice, subtle, paced out reveal mm-hmm. of a memory through the editing. And yeah, I agree. It's very subtle. And this movie is very, is paced very slow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it works. It doesn't drag, it doesn't no. feel like it's dragging. Um, There's not one scene that isn't necessary. Agreed. Yeah. We get information from every single scene. Yeah. I also noticed that there was a lot of, 
establishing shots that lead into a close up versus showing your whole body mm-hmm. and the environment. Like when they get to uh, Dr. Chilton, uh, they show for really quick, like, okay, we're at the uh, mental institute and or the mental hospital or where Hannibal is. And immediately it goes into a close up of Dr. Chilton. And you're like, whoa, okay, that's just Jesus. And like, mm-hmm. so it sets you up to all automatically feel uncomfortable with him mm-hmm. because Clarice is uncomfortable with him because he's hitting on her because you know she's an attractive young woman and like and then he doesn't and then she fires back and that gets him irritated and then all these things so yeah it automatically gets you on edge whenever you see a close-up because that's either people looking at Clarice in a certain way or sizing her up or getting inside her head yeah, so the editing of those close ups, I thought was really cool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just mm-hmm. like also we're seeing it in a big ass screen, you know? Yeah, that helps. So it's really in your face. Mm-hmm. And I had forgotten how close it is. And yeah. I want to kind of back up, you know? I If I was that close to someone, I mean, we're putting the the perspectives together in our head and we're like, whoa, you're all very close. Mm -hmm. Um, If I was that close to someone in real life, I would back up. No, I was just about to make that point of like right now, like me looking at you, you're not as close up as the camera would be Mm -hmm. if it was like that close up, like how would that feeling would be? It is just like insane. Like it's literally right there. Boom, boom. So yeah. Ooh. And I think this kind of leads into the meat. It me. Perfectly. Because Carne. those shots that we're talking about, these extreme close-ups, I already kind of said it, they're indicating something else. They're supposed to make us feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. They're supposed to make us feel like, yo, dude, step away. Because mm-hmm. like how many times, I mean, Leslie, you as a woman, how many times has a man or anyone come up to you and like really gotten close to you oh. and been like, yo, get out of my personal space? Yes. Mm-hmm. A lot. of A lot. Yeah. And so those shots made me feel like that i was like get out of my fucking personal space mm-hmm. creepy doctor I have a bubble. Yeah. yeah you know yeah and so this movie is constantly making us feel uncomfortable because mm-hmm. like you said clarice is uncomfortable and this is all about i mean trying to be about the female experience i think within almost any workspace honestly yeah. if you're trying if you're a woman and you're trying to make it in a male dominated industry you're going to get sexualized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's going to feel like everyone is in your face like that all yeah. the time. Oh, and it is. It definitely is. <laughs> um, the one thing that uh, in the script, you know, I th- or the book, uh, when uh, Dr. Hannibal is asked her why she ran away mm-hmm. and she said, I just did. And he immediately turned it sexual. I ran away. Hi, Clarice. Did the rancher make you perform fellatio? Did he sodomize you? No. He was a very decent man. Every character that she came, every male character that she came in contact with, there was a sexualized moment that they had with her. Mm-hmm. Every single character, even the male characters that we like, yep. even the quote unquote good guys the professor the professor the the moth guys that knew the bugs i mean they even mm-hmm. made some sort of like do you ever go out do you want to go on a date in the middle of them working and we were talking about uh we both kind of hood whenever uh one of those guys was like grabbed her friend that like the other woman in the fbi academy and like grabbed her with both shoulders like that and was like oh geez it's like while well, they were taking a picture <laughs> so happy yeah yeah it was just like oh, okay dude like i mean being one arm is creepy but you can do both bro okay yeah um, but at time time and time again this movie i think does a great job of setting up the female characters jodie foster as like everything is against them but mm-hmm. time and time again she proves that she isn't what they think she is. Right. Like we see her doing everything herself. She's going to most of these places to find these clues all by herself on her own. I mean, we have a scene where she's like going to the the storage unit and 
none of those dudes are helping her open that door. There's the cop just sitting behind the car, the the cop car wheel just watching her mm -hmm. and she's got a jacket up herself. She's got to go in there herself <laughs> and like fucking take control of the situation. All these yeah. dudes are just like, I, I, do I don't want to do physical work. Jacket off herself. She's got a jacket, jacket off, her off herself. He said jacket up, to be fair. Oh, jacket up. Jacket up. If it was jacket off, I would be left to probably. I mean, and I also in that scene is so, this proves how smart she is. Mm-hmm. Before she went inside, yes. she gave her card information to the old man saying, hey, the FBI knows I'm here and they know you. So exact, like it's, th they'll be coming mm -hmm. if anything. So yeah. might as well you call. Mm -hmm, um, and yeah. And then when she like found that head in there, mm -hmm. you know, oh, my God, I would have lost my marbles. Absolutely just done. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go home. I don't know. Who the fuck is this is, but I yeah. don't want to get involved. That was another good test, though, of her. I mean, me too. Duh, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> this is yeah. fucked up. I'm uh, out of here. Thank you, boy. No, another good test, though, of that's a situation that she went through, but she continued to follow the leads and try to go on the mm -hmm. case. I think another scene that was a good example of that is when they find one of Buffalo Bill's victims were in the autopsy room. She has her back turned. And then they uncover the body mm -hmm. and then she has a moment before she turns around to look at the body. I think all the other dudes in that room were expecting her to have like a like a crazy reaction to what she saw. But mm -hmm. you could tell when she turned, she was struggling to look at the body, yeah. but she did her job. Mm -hmm. She got through it and she made her observations. She got some clues she out of it. She put on a brave face. She did it. Mm -hmm. She yeah. proved them wrong. Yeah. Yeah. She can yeah. do the job despite Man, the she, absolute resistance to it. Yeah. You know, um, this may be contradictory, but like crying on camera to me is easy. You can get there. Mm -hmm. Um, but holding it in, wanting to actively cry mm -hmm. and not crying, that performance is fucking hard. And mm -hmm. If if you've ever been in a like in a theater class or anything like that, you'll you'll understand, I guess, that like that shit is hard. They were slaughtering the spring lambs. And they were screaming. And you ran away? No. First I tried to free them. I I opened the gate to their pen, but they wouldn't run. They just stood there. Confused. They wouldn't run. And it's insane that we as the audience can see her, see the emotions that she's hiding, but she is hiding them well. Mm -hmm. And we still understand what's going on in her head. Like it, 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 to juggle all those things as an actor, yeah, insanely impressive. And that's why, again, awards mean nothing. Right. But getting recognized for like understanding how emotions feel in your body and being able to have that transcend mm -hmm. in a movie to the audience mm -hmm. and making this movie actually terrifying. Yeah. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's chilling, chilling. You know, I was just thinking, sorry, I don't mean to. No, I'm done. Um, total I'm done. slight <laughs> subject change also of just like, so... I the Hannibal and Clarice I think had two main things in common uh was that they were both underestimated which we talked about mm -hmm. where so we talked about how Jody's underestimated cuz she's a woman but then Hannibal Lecter was underestimated cuz they didn't realize how fucking smart he was how psychotic he is how crafty he is whatever um They just see him as a psychotic killer right they keep distancing themselves from him and Clarice is the only one that doesn't really have that much distance between him. Because, mm -hmm. like, uh, Crawford has all these assumptions about him. Dr. Chifford or something. Mm -hmm. Chilton. Creep, yeah. I yeah, Chilton. Creep, yeah. Dr. Whatever. Chilton. Creepy dude. Creepy girl. <laughs> Creepy doctor. Yeah. 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 Um, he had all these assumptions because he was, like, he's he pisses me off. Like, he thinks he's smarter than me, but I'm actually the smart one kind of thing. So they have all these assumptions, and that's what gets them fucked up. And you can kind of see how their assumptions mess with everything uh, at the end when Jody's at the right or Clarice is at the right house and they're at the wrong house. 
because they assumed that he would be going to that one versus the small town Ohio one. And Clarice did all that research and that's what pointed mm-hmm. at her instead of them assuming. Yeah. The relationship too, I think is like, like between Lecter and Clarice, what, what you're kind of talking about is way more built on respect mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. any other relationship in this movie. Like right. they, she shows respect to him because she understands how smart he is. Mm-hmm. And he then in turn shows respect to her because I think he does also understand mm-hmm. how intuitive and smart she is too. Mm-hmm. But every other character in the movie is underestimating both of, underestimating both of them. And I like um, that this movie too has this element of the butterfly or I'm sorry, the moth because mm-hmm. that is totally about transformation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's another massive theme that we have in this movie because our three main characters, that being Clarice, Hannibal Lecter and Buffalo Bill are all trying to go, maybe not trying, but are all going through a transformation. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important for uh, Clarice that she's in the part of her life where she's graduating from being a cadet to becoming a full-fledged agent. Big transformation, change in her life. And her, I think in this movie, her transformation is going from that uh, unconfident, naive cadet to the full-fledged, confident FBI agent. Mm -hmm. We have the Hannibal Lecter character who's going from the caged animal to this free now shark shark just out there. We don't know where he is. He could Mm -hmm. be anywhere. And then we have also Buffalo Bill who's trying to make a physical transformation. Mm -hmm. So we have all these different perspectives of what transformation could be Mm -hmm. and if it's good, if it's bad. Well, it's so funny you mentioned that because I wanted to talk about how when Hannibal left when he broke out, he grabbed one of the officers and turned him into an image of the moth. Mm-hmm. Or at least it, they had their arms out with the flag forming the wing. It so was, it was pretty was mothy. Free. Yeah. The United States of America. What? What? Freedom? Is that mm-hmm. what we have here? Like, God bless the USA. There's so many fucking shots of George W. Bush. Because that's he was what, a president. Well, that's what I was thinking too. There, in Buffalo Bill's lair, we see a lot of skin suits and all that mm-hmm. other gross stuff. A lot of American flags, though. A lot of American that's propaganda, yeah. Nazi slash American propaganda. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is an interesting tie that because we don't see American flags anywhere else in the movie except in Hannibal Lecter's cage mm-hmm. and Buffalo Bill's basement. I'm mm. like, hmm, interesting. God bless the USA. America. It's, wow. yeah. Um, I just find it really gross. I don't want to be reminded where the fuck I am. <laughs> yeah, um, right. I don't need my movies to make it seem like they're in America and flags and shit. Let's go somewhere else. I don't yeah. know. It just seems. <laughs> Send me somewhere else. Uh, please. Australia. I'm trying to escape in a movie. No, I'm just right. trying to go to the, like, Gardens of, Lourdes, the ga- please take me. <laughs> uh, Gardens of the Galaxy, you know? Take me Just away, take Thanos. Take me out of here. Please snap me away. Uh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we keep on track. We're pretty uh, fun. We're, for the most part, on track. Yeah. Um. No, but like, it's not at the same time. Let's get to the cook. All right. Let's get to it. How they actually made it. And I mean, mm. I think that it's it's perfect that we talked about the can and the meat before this because I think it's it's the performances and the themes um, and how they're shooting it that all come together to make everything work. Mm-hmm. Like, we've already talked about all the things that we like about how they're shooting it. Um, and I think that that combined with the performances of the actors understanding the characters so well and their motivations and what this movie is trying to say, both those things just come together and make us as the audience... I, for at least for me, I felt like I was completely satisfied mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. both those things coming oh, yeah. together. Absolutely. Another thing that I wanted to mention, and glad we're doing it now, because it makes sense in the segment. But I don't know if you guys are gonna agree, or any of the audience. But I had a really big sensation of 
Twin Peaks, you know, the way that it was shot, the way the coloration, you know, Mm -hmm. loosely that kind of like detective aspect of it Mm -hmm. and it being slow and mechanical and, you know, our what's the uh, detective's name? Clarice? No, Uh, in Twin Twin Peaks. Peaks. Oh, in Twin Peaks? I don't know. Dylan... (laughs) McLaughlin. <laughs> That's his actual name. Yeah. Um, but it's it's very it's it's what Twin Peaks wants to be. I don't I can't remember when Twi- mm. Twin Peaks. The nineties uh, as well. Yeah. But I totally see what you're saying about like the, think it was the later. tone of it mm-hmm. is like dreary, really yeah. drab and very gray mm-hmm. and very slow paced. And uncomfortable. Like, mm-hmm. I think that both of them feel off in some way, too, which everything about this case is off and everything about what's going on is very off. Yeah. And I totally see what you're saying. And also the heavy shadows, too. Yep. That's going on. Mm-hmm. David Lynch loves fucking heavy shadows. Mm-hmm. And this ha- had a lot of shadows, a lot of dark spaces that we were in. Very minuscule kind of like facial expressions to... Mm transcendent feeling and yeah i see the i see the lynch you in know, there for sure just a little yeah. bit where at least david lynch got inspiration from because yeah like the coloration too of it i love the shots of the the beginning of the forest mm-hmm. and her running and it's like very fucking foggy and stuff um and it like it showed someone who I mean, my initial thought when I see a woman in the woods is never good. I you have to leave, you know. Um, so for her to be running and doing an endurance kind of physical activity, it also shows that her mental state is transcends. You know, that physical aspect is the mental. Um, so she was perfect in that in those regards that she was going to get the work done and she was going to figure it out. She trudged through the deep, dark, foggy forest mm-hmm. to make it through. She was the first one there. And she was, yep. you know, she she welcomed it. Yeah. Well, can I? No, absolutely. No, not. no. You and want hey. me to do physical activity at 5 a.m. in the morning? Hey, shout out to Jodie Foster. She was definitely doing those climbs. She oh, was. Yeah. She, she was. Doing that, that was her. She was doing yeah. that track. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn. 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 Yeah. I want to go right. running. I don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> pass. Let's get to. I mean, we're talking about horror, right? right? Let's talk no. about the thrill. <laughs> Woo! What makes us scary? And if you guys are okay with it, I had an idea. Mm. Let's break it down into our bad guys, huh? Let's talk about first of all, Buffalo Bill. It rubs the lotion on its skin, or else it gets the hose again. Huh? Ooh. Our who's yeah. our killer? Mm-hmm. Who we have running around? Who we're trying to. Trapped the whole An time. Active serial killer. Our active mm-hmm. serial played by Ted Levine. Great mm-hmm. performance, by the way. Oh, Shout yes. out to him. Very creepy. Yes. Um, and what I like about how they present Buffalo Bill is we don't even see him until I was like trying to keep track at least a half hour mm-hmm. into the movie. Mm-hmm. They keep him very elusive. They talk about him. We see crime scenes photos of what he has done. It's very fucked up. And we don't see him until a little later. Mm-hmm. And then we only see him a couple times, really, throughout the whole movie. There's maybe five to six times that we cut to him and see him doing things, which are, again, creepy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like that they keep him elusive. It makes him feel like a loose cannon, a loose animal that we don't know where he is. We don't know when he's going to strike. Well, mm-hmm. I am pretty sure that is how detectives feel like when they're trying to solve a crime where it involves multiple murders and they're just like oh my god we need to get the information now i've Mm -hmm. like heard episodes of true crime of just like detectives totally getting obsessed with the case and that's what happened with the nightcrawler Mm -hmm. um where like the detectives, there was two detectives that were working on it, and one of them absolutely got so absorbed that his um, 
his uh, uh, wife and family had to move out. And then she ended up eventually divorced him. But if it weren't for his work, his dedication, he wouldn't have been caught as fast as he did because there's people that go years, you know? So I'm assuming the uh, Bill guy was killing for a couple of years, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Well, didn't they at one point say that he's really patient? And he'll yeah because he, he starves them right because he starves them and he like, kidnaps him he starves them better and better and better at it because he was on his fifth one or he did his fifth one and then Catherine was supposed to be his sixth one if yes. I'm not mistaken I believe yeah. yeah and like was gonna finish his uh, skin suit yeah so he probably had been doing it for a while yeah and Cause... sorry and I like <laughs> seeing him when we cut back to him we only see him at his extremes too like the scenes that we have of buffalo bill are him kidnapping someone him sewing a skin suit him yelling and starving his prisoner him dancing around with a a scalp on his head like we only see him at his extremes Mm -hmm. but we see him sparingly so i think in our heads we're like oh my god like this guy's fucking crazy like we only are seeing the extremes and i think that that's what the detectives Mm -hmm. are experiencing too they're only thinking about the extremes of this character and it's making him 10 times scarier in in our heads and in the detectives heads as well yeah i mean yeah and i think also we don't like so the fbi and everybody's trying to go by the book and trying to be like well he's doing this he's and they're like measuring all of the like cuts and the gashes on that where they are and where they're located and if that's going to explain anything or like they're trying to they can't rationally come up with what's driving this guy and mm-hmm. we're watching him and he's doing all these things and we see him like screaming when she's screaming like what's that about um he has this poodle what the hell is that what's that he has a skin wig on what's that about we're all confused about that too um and that makes him scared because we don't know we Oh god. Creepy as shit. Yeah, Buffalo Bill is creepy. But let's get to the other villain that we have running around. Or not running around, really. Not until the end. Oh, well, he doesn't run. He just he slithers. Dr. Hannibal Lecter. How they shoot him in this cage. Mm -hmm. Like the amount of security they have around him, this tiny guy. Very calculated movements in this cage just makes him scarier. To me, it is like he's a caged animal and we don't even know how dangerous he is. Right. But there's a reason that he's in this cage. Yep. I think this actually perfectly goes into uh, the thing I was going to talk about next, which is the actual violence of this movie, which is all (sighs) almost all of the violence in this movie is implied Mm -hmm. because we have crime scene photos. Mm -hmm. We have we have them visiting the crime scene. We have the autopsy. We see skin suits. We see, uh, I mean, Buffalo Bill's entire basement is just full of implied violence. Mm -hmm. And even when we see him kidnap the girl, him punching her is off screen. Mm -hmm. And so it's smart because it's making us, going back to this, like it's making our imaginations Mm -hmm. have to do the work, which sometimes makes it even worse. The only time we really see violence is Hannibal Lecter's escape scene. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And Jodie Foster, uh, I mean, Clarice Starling shooting Buffalo Bill. Too. At the mm-hmm. end. But even then, that's kind of off because it's in the pitch black. Then you see the flashes, but you don't really see the violence too much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's effective. It, it, yeah, very effective. The thoughts are really, and again, going back to that autopsy thing scene, I thought it was shot so well mm-hmm. Because we're seeing her reaction. Mm -hmm. So we are wondering, what the fuck is she seeing to get that reaction? We never see the body, except for the hand at one point. Mm -hmm. But we then have to No, we do at the end. At the very end. But it's like kind of a payoff of like, after you like, oh, that's what she's been looking at. Whoa, that's really bad kind of thing. This movie is Clarice versus Lecter and Clarice versus Buffalo Bill. Mm -hmm. But- those two people both view her differently Mm -hmm. because we have Buffalo Bill who only sees women as objects, not even human, but Hannibal Lecter actually respects her as a human being. And 
we see how it ends up for both of them. Mm-hmm. Hannibal Lecter escapes mm-hmm. and Buffalo Bill dies. I think also because there's another um, line that I really like. And he says, you are like, he's like, I'm not going to come and get you. The world is so much better with you in it. I have no plans to call on you, Clarice. The world's more interesting with you in it. So him being out is so much better for her, too, Mm. because she will always have a case and they will always try to, like, meet up. It'll be that cat cat and mouse game forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Ooh, it's kind of like uh, Batman and the Dark Knight and the Joker. And the Joker. says, we're going to be doing this forever. Yeah. It's like, ooh, well. We give each other purpose. Yeah. Almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is He's a like, fucked up reality. Yeah, you're never going to kill me because I give you purpose. Whoa. Oh. Oof. Damn. Dang. What a performance. Well, well that one the, as well. Let's get to the end of the overall ride. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. This movie, we already talked about it, it's slow pace, but I was never bored. I was never bored. It is so good. Mm -hmm. Every scene I felt like we were learning more about either the character or the case. Mm -hmm. So it was every scene we were like just getting more information, just tiny spoon fed to us a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it just felt so satisfying at the end when we see all the characters either come together or die or get away. You know, Mm -hmm. it just all felt very satisfying. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. And yep. to go from uh, Clarice being uh, scared of everything and scared of her authenticity to her being an official FBI agent, but also like with the confidence knowing that she can do it, mm-hmm. that's really satisfying too. Of like, man, you went through all that and now you're an FBI agent? And she's so, oh. I guess, like, not to use the word relatable. But she just so down to earth that she's able to uh, ask the right questions to the small town people um, that I don't think somebody from the city or someone that didn't grow up in those kind of atmospheres and closeness that Mm -hmm. people tend to be when you're living in a space like that. um, I think that's what made her even more of a, a... important aspect to solving the case. That and was that was part of her superpower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because at at first that small townness that she rejected became something that was useful in solving yeah. the case. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So So small town girls, anybody out there, you might be the Angela. next president of the United States. Could be. Whoa. You could find Buffalo Bill in a very creepy basement. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yay. 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 Yeah, yeah, small town women. You got <laughs> this. Yeah. All right. Wow. Silence well, of the Lambs, y'all. Yeah. Whoa. Hell yeah. Glad we got that one on this podcast. I know. It's it's good. Good. It's good, really good. 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 All right. Well, let's get us to some smashed pumpkin ratings. Smash your roots, can After everybody. all those categories that we just went through, what do we think out of five smashed pumpkins? Tim, let's start with you. I would have to go with a. 4.75. 4.75. Wow. Yeah. Um, the last 0.25 that was the holdback for me, I don't know. I don't know. You Do can, you, I mean, you can give it a, f- a You're five. allowed to go a five. I don't know, but like, what um, I hesitate to give movies like a perfect rating only because like, there's some movies that are like so perfect that you're like, oh, I don't know like that as much as too well done and mm. this was like not that way it was such a good movie but it didn't make me feel like well that wrapped up super conveniently mm. that was really nice it was just like i still feel unsettled from it so yeah, this anyway. 4.75 is actually probably more of a compliment than a five i would yeah. say so truly there you go because like there's you know some david fincher moments that you're like that's too perfect mm. Mm. and you don't like can't emotionally connect to it Versus this movie, I felt very emotionally connected to the entire time. And I feel like that means that something had to break a little bit Even, for the benefit yeah. of me being on the edge of my seat. Mm. Yeah, mm. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Wow. I like the perspective. Yeah. Very nice. Lily? I am going to contradict you. I'm going to give it a five. One five. <laughs> Ooh. Knew that was coming. It's the first five. <laughs> that. <laughs> 
no big deal. Um, no, I'm just kidding. She's a big Jodie Foster. <laughs> I do Who like her. She's great. Um, it, it does. Okay. Talking about her performance in Anthony Hopkins, mm-hmm. both very subtle, very intentional, so much thought going into each particular movement. Um, I absolutely love it. I think it makes reading the script, seeing it being uh, shown to us Mm -hmm. so much more impactful. And I really, really, really enjoyed that. And also the coloration of this movie I really like. And Mm -hmm. the edits. Mm -hmm. So much. But the script is so good. To grab a book and translate it into a film. And I mean, I don't know how people who read the book what they feel like because usually those people those hardcore people are like eh, it wasn't mm-hmm. great so i would like to read the book Maybe makes want me to. want to see read it mm-hmm. see for myself and my brain yeah. yeah wow i think that a lot of times when i think of like really good movies i obviously think about the watchability i've watched this movie so many times mm-hmm. and like i still enjoy it i feel like as much as I did the first time mm-hmm. that I watched it. And those moments, you know, we get the reveal that Lecter is got the skin, like the skin mask on mm-hmm. and like the elevator scene and the end too, when she's in the basement, it all still works so well and makes me on edge, even though I know exactly what's going to happen. So the watchability of this movie is incredible. And I think that's why it stayed in the horror ether and lore for so long mm-hmm. and will stay there forever. I also will give this movie a five. Okay. Oh, Damn. Well, okay. Now listen, I don't want to. Listen, don't, don't change it. Don't. No, 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 no. Change. No, no, don't no, change no. it because you should. You I should know. keep it. But like, I, you have your own I don't personal risk. Something beating this it's okay. movie. It's okay if it's not a perfect five. Listen, Jonathan Demi, rest in peace. I'm sorry. I w- I want to get. Um, I say keep your score, man. All right. You got to score it on yourself. This isn't about oh. you changing your standards for us. You have your no, own personal right. standards. You are. Mm. You are your own, Tim. Mm. That's right. Keep it, Tim. Keep it. <laughs> All right. No, it made sense as to why you didn't give it a five. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I agree that's a good, with you. That's a good reason, too, because <laughs> yeah. that is something that I don't even really think about that much is like the things that work that aren't even necessarily planned you know right. like that is fair to think about and i a five could just be thrown away as like oh perfect score. i mean right look at marley and me that's that's a that's i don't i've never seen that you haven't no, is that a perfect film or i mean it's about you know a man's relationship with his pet yeah and having raised it and now it's passing on yeah i mean not the silence, of the, dog. Song, but silence like, of the dog. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's those movies that I never fucking want to see. And because yeah. I saw Marley and Me, I will never see another fucking dog movie ever yeah, again. Never see my dog skip. That is like Frankie oh, Muniz. My dog skip. Oh my god. Oh. But like Tragic. I haven't even seen like Frankie Muniz. Those uh air Oh the Airbud? Airbud. Air well, those don't those are fun though. Those don't end no, up no, like no. old yellow. I know, but I don't want to see that it. That dog wins the game, okay? Yeah. That no. dog Spoilers. wins the fucking game Spoilers for them. Spoilers on the Airbud. No, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. There was That's a lot of Airbuds, and he won every game, I promise you. <laughs> that I dog was did. amazing. This podcast is all about spoilers. Fans. We, well, that's true. Yep. We do spoil the shit. It's about the fans. Yeah. Tim, Man. wow. Congrats. Thank you Thank so much. Congratulations, I was wow. going to say. <laughs> congrats. Thank you. Honestly, congrats, Sam. Thank, Thank you for making Thank you. it. Thank you. Uh, yeah. we, do no, need, we do need one more thing from you, <laughs> yes. and that is to pick the movie for next week. <gasps> oh, we... snap. Air Bud? It could Air be Air Bud. Bud. It could, Air, Air Bud could be Marley and Me. Um, I mean, that probably Marley sounds good. Can you watch that? If we picked oh, that shit. out of the bucket, could no. you watch that? No, it would be I'll the first it. one that I would Thank say you. no to. So uh, Ooh, re- oh. read the log line first and then let us guess what guess. it is. By yeah. that reaction, I'm pretty excited. You should be. It's one I know, probably. Mm-hmm. No, In I'm... 1979, a group of young filmmakers set out to make an adult film in rural Texas. But when their reclusive elderly host catch them in the act, the cast find themselves fighting for their lives. X. X, baby. X, baby. I'm I sorry, that's pronounced Zy. Zy. Like xylophone. 
No, it's X. It's oh, X. Uh, Ty West. Ty West. <laughs> Ty West X. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it was T West. Or T. Because I'm Tim, so it's, T. It's Zy by T West. Zy, Zy by T West. <laughs> awesome. What a X. Excited. That is a fun one. No. You haven't seen this, right? I haven't. But you I saw Pearl. I saw, I saw Wait, Pearl. You saw the sequel before the... Well, so it's a prequel. I, I was oh, wow. I was very interested in it, yeah. and let me tell you, I've heard great, great. things. So yeah, I'm excited. Great, fantastic, I'm excited. Mia Goth. I'm obsessed. Tim, please yes. plug yourself. Where can we find you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can find me uh, at Kalamazoo Parakeet on Instagram. Um, I've also started a water sommelier business. <laughs> Pretty excited about it. Um, What's that called? It's uh, called Desarki. Desarki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's um, Ozarka and then the Sani water. So they have tasked me with becoming a water sommelier. Um, so I'm working at the Ritz Carlton now. Um, we really check the pH balance of the waters, make sure the guests are happy with their water choice. Um, it's more than just Pellegrino. It's more than just tap water. Wow. We uh, bring in water from Rhode Island, if the guest so chooses. Uh, 1979 was a wow. great year. By the way. Oh, okay, nice. Very refreshing. So I'm doing that. Um, I'm actually doing a new podcast. It's called AirPod. It's about Air Bud. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Air so Pod. we rewatch all of the Air Buds. We pause it after every scene and we talk about the scene in detail. <laughs> <laughs> so how many episodes is that up to at this point? <laughs> right now we are still in the planning phase. Okay. Um, I haven't really got it down on film yet. We're Apple's really mad at us for calling it AirPods because oh, they yeah. have okay. a claim on that. No. So we're trying to figure out a different name. I totally, yeah. Um, legal, sorting through wow. the legal issues. It's I get it. Steve to... Jobs is a motherfucker, I tell you. Yeah, I because mean, dead. money. That's what you think. Lots of money. He's um, frozen somewhere. Yeah, he's in Crete. No, uh, no. Sire, what it was, uh, Carbonite. With uh, like Han Solo. Mm -hmm. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I'm doing that. Uh, I'm busy these days, y'all. Um, and I'm also have, have a new metal funk band. It's called uh, Frog Lung. And uh, for all of you that need uh, musical chair needs, our niche right now is to get into musical chairs. <laughs> and uh, we have a playlist already that we invite you to play at your next. <laughs> Let me ask you this though: like, <laughs> is it? Hold on. Is is yes. Frog Lung? Do they provide the music for musical chairs or do they provide the chairs for music? It, yeah. You said it's a musical chair service. So we, thank you. How um, tough are the chairs? Well, we mm -hmm. are still crowdfunding for our uh, chairs. You don't have we any have chairs. This. No, no, no. Listen. <laughs> you're a, you're a Listen, musical chair. People have chairs. So they will provide their own chairs for now. BYOC. But if you... <laughs> Yes. Okay. Okay. So if you go to gofundme.com slash froglung, you'll find our campaign. We're raising funds to get really sturdy, nice chairs that can withstand any kind of musical chair endeavor, whether it's mm -hmm. a brawl. We have brawls. Uh, we invite 32 year olds to play musical chairs. And nice. uh, five year olds, they're a little softer, they're a little better. They um, don't typically bra brawl as much. Mm -hmm. um, but you never know. And okay. so we are. Raising fifty thousand dollars for four chairs that are nearly indestructible. Um, so if you want to help us with that, that'd be really great. And nearly, nearly. Yeah, yeah. So we have oh, the music, okay. we have the band. We will play. Bring your own chair, though. But bring, bring your, your own, own chair, chair for now. For now. For now. B -Y -O -C. For now. Byoc. I gotta say, like that was the one of the best plugs yeah. we've ever had on this show. Listen, everybody's I, so shy to so share shy. what they're I doing and nowadays. I'm passionate about you my got water. Yeah. My musical chairs, uh, my AirPod. Pending. Pending. Podcast. Yeah. I have to put in quotes now. Sorry, I didn't do that before. So just like CGI yeah. me doing that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Through sound. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so. Wow. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. And I'm also working at Target. So come by and uh, <laughs> sign up for a red card and get 5% off. You are very busy. Wow. You were not joking. I'm not. I don't joke around. I don't no. know how you're here, man. I don't know hey, how listen. you're here. Ooh. I just, my gift is my presence, you know? Mm. I mean, that's, that's my, what that's... you think. Leslie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Color me Leslie on Instagram. And me at Beep Beep Richie T. And us at The Deadlights Pod. Also, check out Playground Social. Yeah. That's a yes. studio that we are 
broadcasting is from, mm-hmm. doing this from, Broadcast. watching this from, all live of Live streaming. All live stream. Multi- this is live. This is live. This is an eight weeks what? in the past this for you. live the whole time? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. You are effed. You and your musical chair business are effed. But until <laughs> next time, let's, let's get, get spooky. spooky. <laughs> musical chairs, musical chairs. Rock long on Spotify. Do it.